Good morning, everybody. Thank you. This is an exciting time. Because of COVID, we haven't been able to present at assembly for a couple of years our high achievers of the HSC. So today we are celebrating success, academic success from last year's cohort of HSC students. We also keep in mind success of all of our students who complete a HSC, first and foremost, it's a huge achievement, but we, we, we also quietly just, just uh, celebrate any student who has gone on to full-time employment, to a traineeship or an apprenticeship, um, whether it's pathway A or pathway B at our college, we certainly celebrate all the success. But our goal today is to celebrate our high academic achievers. Last year, we were really happy to receive seven scores above 90. So for many kids, particularly in the junior years, they don't really understand what that means, but this means that the ATAR score for university entrance, calculated by a university in Sydney, has given those students from our college a score of 90% or 90 ATAR points, which is a, a really high achievement. So we'll celebrate those people, and unfortunately some of them couldn't be here because university has started. Normally we run this assembly in about week three or week four, but the year 12s were at retreat, so we couldn't run it back then. So there you can see on screen, we're looking at celebrating our ATAR 90s and above. We'll also talk about our ducks for 2022. And we'll also mention some students, and we're lucky to have a couple with us, who achieved really well in learning gain and also accelerated study. So year 11 kids who finished a year 12 subject at a very high level. Thanks. So, unfortunately James couldn't be here today. I've communicated with James and his family several times in the last couple of weeks. Check out that score, 97.45. So his score was our highest score in the ATAR last year. And I'd have to go back to Mr Chambers to see if that's one of our highest in records. Not the highest, but it's up there. Thank you. Another amazing achievement. But James, last year, 97.45. Look at his subjects he studied. English Advanced, Maths Advanced, Music 1, Physics, Studies of Religion 1, and he completed Biology when he was in Year 11. He ranked top three in New South Wales in music. And he is our ducks. So in his absence, let's all congratulate him. You can't see it well, but he will receive two plaques, one for being a high achiever and one for being ducks. And our honour board, which sits above the entry, but it's not there, it's absent at the moment, it's being um, renovated, if you like, and it's going to see, uh, it'll have his name on that honour board forever for our college. So James has done really well, but very close behind James was India Reid. India scored a 96.75, a huge achievement. India is absent today. I've spoken to India and her, her mum recently, um, and I'll, I'll fill you in with what all, what all the kids are doing this year. Uh, but India couldn't make it today, she's at university, but she studied English Advanced, Maths Advanced, Chemistry, PDHPE, Studies of Religion and Accelerated Biology in Year 11, 2021. Another fine achievement, round of applause for India. Our next student is Billy Flynn, 94.50. And I want you to really look at the subjects they're studying. Not everybody does the same subjects. There's variety in the subjects they studied. And you'll see that, and you might hear about that from some of our students during the presentation as well. So Billy studied English, 
Extension English, Legal Studies, Math Standard 2, Music 1, Studies of Religion, and he also completed Accelerated Biology when he was in Year 11. And like the other recipients, he'll get a plaque. I've spoken to him and his, and his mum recently as well, so can we congratulate Billy? Cara. Cara scored a 91.05. Again, one of those top results, 90 plus. English Advanced, English Extension 1, Maths Advanced, Legal Studies, Society and Culture, and Studies of Religion 1. Congratulations, Cara. Shay, 90.65. Congratulations, Shay. She scored the elusive 90 plus ATAR and she studied English Advanced, Biology, Chemistry, PDHPE, Studies of Religion 1, and she accelerated mathematics in 2021, year 11. Congratulations, Shay. And the final person in our first list is Harrison Davies. 90.05 and his subjects were, as you can see, English Advanced, Maths Standard 2, Chemistry, Modern History, PDHPE and Studies of Religion. Another fine effort. Congratulations to Harrison. So where are they now? I'll just, uh, before we go to the next slide, that's okay. James Hessian is at University of Queensland and he's studying Biomedical Science. So University of Queensland is in Brisbane um, and he is hoping to go into medicine when he's finished his first degree. So already he's planning about seven years of study straight out of year 12 and then further studied when he becomes a doctor. India Reid is actually doing the exact same course at the same location and her goal is the same. She wants to be a doctor as well. Billy Flynn. He's studying um, honours in psychological science, also at University of Queensland. Um, he's really passionate about psychology and psychological science, so that's his field of interest. Cara is in, in a, she's actually studying a dual degree, arts and psychology, and she's in Melbourne, so she's travelled a long way from home to pursue her studies. Shay has a very interesting story. Shay has deferred her studies. She was originally. She was originally uh, getting into Biomed at Griffith Uni, but she's taken a year off. She's actually at Jillaroo, up at a, a cattle station in North Queensland. I've spoken to her a couple of times. Her car broke down on the way up, so I had a chance to speak to her when she wasn't driving, but she has taken a very different path for, year, for her first year out of school. It's called a gap year, and she's at Jillaroo in a remote location. Um, I couldn't get her video because the Wi-Fi was so sketchy, particularly after floods in the area where she's at, but I, I am going to secure her video at a later date. So that's Shay's story. Harrison, who you can see on screen, he's studying a Bachelor of Paramedics at Griffith University, and he wants to become a doctor after he's done that study as well. So uh, a few people there that have gone to Health Sciences. We're joined and I'll let Charlie speak soon, but we're joined by Charlie on stage and Charlie will be studying, or he already has studied, Information Technology at Queensland University of Technology, which is in Brisbane. But we'll talk to Charlie uh, shortly. We also are here to um, celebrate, and Charlie is one of these people, um, a student who has shown the most growth across the years of uh, St. Joseph's College, Year 7 to 12. So, we don't do a calculation, but an external um, st statistician does a calculation for each Catholic school in the state, and he proposes this learning gain, which is a measure of the amount of learning that a student has gained relative to similar students in similar schools across the state. And so, the recipients of, of our highest learning gain a couple of familiar names, but a couple of different ones. So I'm happy to say that Charlie is in person. Could you stand up, Charlie? And I might ask uh, Mr. McLaughlin at this point in time to present Charlie his plaque 
for his highest learning gain in our college for 2022. Congratulations. You can see there India Reid, Charlie Kerb, Jack Schultz, Zach Van Zul, and, and James Hessian. Uh, I couldn't, uh, we couldn't get everybody here because they're studying and they're busy. So, um, in Zach's case, he is currently uh, attending pilot training. He's learning to be a pilot, um, and that's his chosen career pathway. So, um, can we just put, do a round of applause for all of these learning games? We've mentioned that a couple of those students had studied an accelerated course when they were in year 11. And that doesn't start in year 11, it starts way back in year 9. So as many of you here have started an accelerated course, and we just want to celebrate a couple of students who have done really, really well in their accelerated courses last year. You can see there Alicia and May. Um, and Alicia and May are going to be presented um, a beautiful certificate just to acknowledge their, their outstanding achievement and actually the girls have prepared a small speech which is fantastic so really listen to what they have to say um, hopefully they can inspire some of you to do some great things but before they come up I might just get Mr McLaughlin to present Alicia and then May their certificates congratulations girls My apologies. It's my. It's not my apologies then. Okay, over to the girls, thanks. <laughs> so both of us, both of us originally picked to do the accelerated program because of the extra free period to getting Year 12, but also the added benefit of gaining experience from doing the HSC one year early, allowing us to be better prepared for our other subjects. But over those three years, we learned many important lessons. One of which, I think, is the importance of having a dedicated place where you can study. Through experience, I know that studying at an empty desk with my phone out of sight is what works best for me. Okay. One lesson which I learned from doing the Accelerated Program is that it is extremely important to see the people in your class as your team rather than your competition. This was an idea that was constantly repeated to our class by Miss Thompson all of last year and one of the main reasons I think everyone was able to do so well in the HSC. Since our class had been together since year nine, everyone was willing to help each other out, which in the end allowed us all to gain a better understanding of the content. Another lesson that I learned through the experience was how crucial it is to seek out help when you need it rather than just sitting in your confusion. There are so many resources online and there are also heaps of teachers who are willing to help you out if you need it. Overall, the experience was extremely helpful to us and if you get the chance, we 100% recommend doing the program. Thanks to both of you. So these students receive band sixes. They are 90 plus. So a score of 90 in that subject when they're in year 11 doing a year 12 course. So a round of applause again for them. Thank you. So traditionally we get our students up to speak and, and uh, our two year 11 students have done that. But I'd like to invite Charlie Kerr up now to answer a few of my questions. Whilst Charlie's coming up, I've actually asked these questions of all of the um, 98 R students, as well as some of our learning gain highest recipients. Um, and you'll see some of their uh, res responses soon as well. But if you come closer, Charlie. So Charlie, when you're in junior school, so seven to 10, what strategies did you learn uh, to help you succeed in senior school? I think like one of the most important just qualities and techniques is just reaching out in general. Just in the junior school especially, just getting that launching pad to being able to achieve well in senior school. With um, some of the most important ones like parents, definitely a good one to reach out to. As well as the uh, lovely learning support staff here. <laughs> definitely helped. I think especially year 7 and 8, struggling with visual arts 
any of the assignments that are required that of writing, I would come over to learning support and they'll help me through it and then with that eventually I'll be able to do those types of assignments on myself. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great story, so if you don't mind me saying so, um, you, you were getting assistance from learning support in junior school and we're, not, and we're not talking about students who are all the way high achievers, we're talking about kids who have really shown growth and improved in their studies. And Charlie is a fine example of, of that. And through the, the assistance of school, learning support, teachers and, and parents, Charlie's achieved huge growth. Charlie, our second question. If you can remember a time when school was tough, um, how did you deal with that toughness and um, how did you overcome it? I think one tough time, it's more just a problem that I encountered throughout the senior years, it's just distractions, I get distracted very easily, I can't really concentrate, and more about it, reaching out, finding peers to study with is a great way of studying, finding others, doing questions together, you also learn together, it's, it's much easier to stay on task. Charlie, two more questions to go. Could you share with us how you balanced your time between school in Year 12 and your other commitments? I think uh, one way of just like balancing it is just always staying productive. And I don't mean that in the way of always studying, because that's just not a way to do it. But just waste, just not wasting any time doing stuff you like, you enjoy, you're passionate. It's so easy these days to like get on your phone, open TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and spend like up to two hours just flicking through just mindless stuff. You just, you always just got to manage that because you don't really grow from that. And it's just a waste of time basically. I think just finding something you're passionate in or finding ways to relax your mind. Great way to I've seen some of your TikTok dances, Charlie, so they weren't, they weren't completely a waste of time, but, you know, maybe, maybe your TikTok, kids out there, I know you love TikTok, maybe if you do your homework first and then give yourself five minutes after 30 minutes of work to enjoy your TikTok, that might be a, a recipe for success. Thanks, Charlie. One more question of Charlie. What's the best advice you give to any student to achieve their personal best? So, not necessarily all the way to the 90s, but their very best. I don't think this is like directly related to studies, but definitely applies. I don't think you should, you should not just box yourself in to like a specific thing. Maybe like five years ago, I wouldn't be up here, definitely. I was definitely way too scared. I don't think I'd be ever able to do it. And that's those kind of qualities and also other qualities like just being smart means you're not creative. And definitely, while doing uni, I'm on the side, I'm definitely making some music, so it's definitely grown. Just being able to push aside that. You're never going to do well if you don't say you're going to do well. Right. Charlie, well done, mate. We're very, very proud of you. Huge congratulations. Very brave. You know, Charlie was just like many of you guys out there um, in year eight and nine, just plodding along, Charlie. But, um, you know, he's done extremely well. I taught Charlie in senior school, as many of his teachers did, and we're very proud of your achievements, Charlie. And thanks for speaking today. Um, it's not over. I've got lots of pearls of wisdom, and we videoed um, all of our high achievers that were available. We've videoed some of their responses. So please just concentrate, learn something. This is all about um, hopefully you getting something out of other people's success. And we're looking at their responses to these questions. Thank you. So for the first question regarding the strategies that are used in year seven to 10 that are applied um, to senior school, we're to take advantage of some of the online platforms um, such as Kahoot um, and Quizlet which um, allowed me to, I guess, retain a lot of information and apply um, your skills. For, you know, a piece of software such as um, Quizlet, they actually gave you set work that you could use to practice on based off the stuff that you got incorrect. 
So I'd said that that was really helpful for me. So I used year seven to 10 as a period to learn how my brain worked most effectively and like what study methods were most appropriate because going into year seven, I really didn't know what study was or how to do it. So it was good over those junior years to really work out what worked best for me, um, which I established to be like handwritten notes and active recall with flashcards and things like that. Uh, it was also good to work out what subjects I was a bit weaker in um, because then going into year 11 and 12, I knew that I could focus more time on those subjects um, to try and do better there. So for example, I knew coming out of year seven to 10 that English essays were always a bit, a bit of a slog for me. So I knew that I needed to allocate more time to those, especially in the lead up to the due date. Um, so it was good to use the junior years to work out how to manage my time appropriately and what study methods really worked best for me. Um, I think those years were really important in terms of like developing healthy study habits and routines. So by the time I got to year 12, I was used to like doing long study hours. So for me, pretty early on, I would always like get home and I'd start doing my homework or any study at the same time. So that was always like 4.30 I knew I had to like put my phone away. I'd put it in the kitchen, turn it off and start my study then. So, yeah. In year seven to 10, I wasn't like, I wasn't very good at studying. Um, so I think kind of what I learned was what not to do, if that makes sense. Like you kind of hear a lot of strategies when you're first starting up in high school and how you should be dealing with your assessments and stuff. And I took a lot of that on board, but I didn't, it didn't really work for me. I didn't like get the results I was really looking for. Um, but like through doing that, I, I kind of learned how, how I process things and how I get through my work. So I think it was really like fundamental working out what I wanted to do, like in my classes and how I could do them, you know. Um, so in year seven to 10, to 10, sort of towards the end of year 10, one of the things that I came across was just in terms of taking notes, what is the best way to do it, the most efficient way to do it? Um, and obviously it's different for everyone because everybody likes to process information differently. But I found the best thing was actually using mind maps. Um, reason being that I'm not a huge fan of sort of taking notes in like a linear sort of dot point fashion. I just find that kind of gets a bit overwhelming in a sense. And I found that when I switched to taking notes in actually a mind map form, I was able to think a lot more freely and a lot more creatively. Um, and I found that it also really helped in the sense that because it's not that sort of linear dot point form, when I actually sort of did some research into this and how the brain sort of likes to remember things and it processes information, it doesn't like to process things in this linear way. So the brain, if you think about when you're in an exam and you go to answer a question, you know, you don't think in this linear way. You think of, you pull information from all different parts. And that's sort of what the mind mapping did because it allowed me to see whatever was on an exam question and then it was like a chain of events i could see a mind map that i'd created previously in my head and all i had to do was pretty much follow the um chain of events so just in summary for the first question there's some of the responses there some online learning tools enabled some success in senior school learning how the brain works learning your strengths and your weaknesses developing healthy study habits and routines and Harrison's last one, using mind maps to summarise learning and make connections. The second question, tell us a time when you found something to be tough at school and how did you deal with it and overcome it? The time in school would definitely be um, a senior school year 12 um, trial exam period um, because a lot of the exams, well all my exams, were crams within a two week period and I would say one of the strategies that I used to overcome um, that stress um, and hardship during that time was to plan out your day, make a timetable of what you want to achieve um, or a weekly planner um, and um, sort of set out the goals that you want to pursue um, and I guess that will reward you with success within the exams. I always found that at the end of term when all the assessments would fall into like a week or two, that was always really tough for me. It never really got any easier. 
from year 7 through to 12. However, in terms of overcoming it, I really used each assessment block as an opportunity to learn more about how to manage my time better and how to balance multiple assessments and multiple subjects at once um, just a bit better. So essentially, I just tried not to focus on the marks too much. If I did well, I did well. If I didn't, then I learnt from that. I just used it as sort of a chance to refine the actual study process. So then throughout year 11 and 12, I could really try and hone in on doing the best that I possibly could, even during intense, tough periods like that. I feel like in year 12, it's really easy to be overwhelmed by like the course content, the pressure and everything that's going on. I'm not feeling like you don't know how to study properly and things like that. So I found using my teachers was really helpful. They're one of the best resources that you have really. Um, and in terms of actually studying, like making sure I stick by the syllabus and found the techniques that worked, be- that worked best for me. So like active recall was really helpful, making sure I actually knew the content by talking out loud to myself in my room or teaching my brothers, something like that. And also I, I was surrounded by a lot of like, like like-minded friends who you'll probably hear from as well. And that was really good in supporting each other and learning from each other as well. Well, um, I'm like a serial procrastinator, right? Um, so like seven to 12, like I was, that was just an ongoing battle for me. Um, and like, I, I'd kind of get trapped in these cycles of like, I wouldn't do my schoolwork and then I'd be upset about the fact that I didn't do it. So I'd do less of it sort of thing. So I think the way I combated that was that I just like, I stopped beating myself up over taking time for myself. And like through doing that, I kind of gave myself a lot more time to do my the work that I had to put through, you know. So one of the things that I really struggled with in English, and Miss Vella will confirm this, was that I tended to be a perfectionist whenever I tried to write essays. So every sentence that I would write, I would read it, read it over a hundred times and just be thinking, you know, is this worthy of like a band six essay? Is this, you know, is this good enough? Um And towards the end of the HSC, what I started to do is I started to stop being such a perfectionist and I would just go ahead and I would write a first draft. I wouldn't worry about how good it was. I wouldn't worry about the quality. Once I had written out some sort of plan, I'd just go ahead and I'd get that thousand words, 1200 words down on the page. And what I actually found most of the time is that when I did that, and I'd be able to do that in maybe space of maybe two to three days just to be able to get it out the way what I found was that when I did that compared to trying to be a perfectionist and spend all this time spending like you know two three weeks writing an essay I found that the difference in quality was probably only like something like five to ten percent and with a little bit of editing and a little bit of just going back and fixing things up I could easily correct that. So what I found was that I was able to produce these essays so much faster because I stopped being afraid of failure and I just got things down and onto the paper and I stopped worrying so much about being the perfect. I won't read these to you, but I really love what India said. India said, surround yourself with like-minded people. You can still have your friends and that's great, but when it comes to your study, you know that all your friends aren't all in your, in your subjects that you may study. So you might have study groups set up not necessarily based on friendship groups, but working with other people can be highly um, motivating and also very powerful for your academic success. We've got two more questions to go, so can everyone just sit up, please? This is all about trying to get some um, some gain for you as well in your future years. How could you? Sh- oh, sorry. So I asked these students, could you share with us how you balanced your time between school and other commitments? I'm certainly a little bit different to other people. So in my situation, um, I worked opens on both Saturday and Sunday. I did um, 5 a.m. starts, finished it around 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and allowed me to spend the rest of my day um, focusing um, on family, um, spending time with friends, um, I guess doing whatever, um, you know, to get my mind off things from schoolwork. Um, or if I needed to, I could catch up. Um, and I would say that spending one day of the week, preferably on the weekend, um, you know, either Saturday or Sunday, to not do any schoolwork at all um, is a certainly refreshing. It gets your mind off things and it doesn't make you as stressed. I always made sure that school was the number one priority. 
Um, so that should consume the most time. However, it was also really important then, extremely important to have other outlets so that you don't burn out. So like a hobby, it's always really important. Um, so in that way, it's vital to try and make time for those hobbies. Um, so establish a routine of both study, but also establish a routine of breaks. So I knew that every Friday night, regardless of whether I had an assessment due on Monday that I hadn't started, regardless of whether there was a HSC exam the next week, I always took Friday night off. I, I watched a movie, but just find whatever outlet you like. Um, just make time for yourself. Um, so then you can avoid burning out and things like that. Uh, I also found it really helpful to have a dynamic study schedule to allow time for other commitments. A lot of the time you'll see templates for study schedules and things like that and they'll be broken down hour by hour, um, but that never really worked for me because if a task took longer than I had expected or if an unforeseen like commitment came up, then that kind of throws the whole schedule out of whack and that was always a bit tricky for me. So I made sure to have a to-do list and like a vague period of time in which I would like to complete each task and then if other commitments or things like that came up then I would easily be able to make time for those uh, without feeling overwhelmed by like having to stick to a strict hourly based schedule for my studies. I always found that like quite difficult I think by the time it got to year 12 I had to realize that sometimes the most productive thing you can do is rest so you have to listen to your body and know that that is the best thing to do so I would have like Friday nights I'm not going to study and I'll spend time with my family or I'll try and go for runs read a book do something absolutely separate to school so you can come back and feel refreshed and I found a part-time job where I could work Friday Saturday Sunday nights and study during the day so I could fit it all around and still try and do a bit of everything well it's just kind of like a process of trial and error I guess um like you I, I kind of had to find out what works for me through um you know, like, like I, I worked different hours at different jobs um, and that sort of made me work out how, how long I could work without that having an effect on my school life or having an effect on my social life. Um, I Obviously, I wasn't very good at balancing those things because of like how bad I procrastinated sometimes, like yeah. probably not enough work at some points. But um, during the HSC, especially, um, I, I stopped working altogether just because, you know, I, I knew I'd earned enough money in the past to support me through all of that, um, which I would highly recommend to anyone going into year 12 um, for like the month leading up to their exams and during their exams and for their trials as well. Um, Cause it's just like not having that extra bit of pressure to, to perform well at your job like, really does make a really, really big difference, especially if you already have what you need to support yourself through all that. So the big thing that came with trying to balance my time was having a system in place that made that really easy. And all it really was, was just having, um, you know, a digital calendar and something like a to-do list app, just a combination of those two apps that I had across all my devices. And so what that allowed me to do is whenever something would come up, whenever some event would get mentioned, I would immediately put it straight into that to-do list or I'd put it straight into the calendar. And then I'd be able to work around that. And it also really helped because it just took all the stress off having to try and remember things. Because as soon as something popped up, it went straight into that little system, even though it's only two apps. I don't know if you can really call it a system, but, you know, just using that combination of having an input and then immediately externalizing it somehow, that just took all the stress away because I no longer had to try and remember about what things were happening in the future. I just had to you know, log on to my laptop or open up my phone and everything would be there. So I pretty much just ran my day to day on autopilot because I just knew, all right, what's going on today? And I had this, 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 this. And that's something that I use even up to today. There's some really good points there for all of us to learn from, particularly prioritizing and also, you know, looking at our time management. The final question, what is the best advice you would give to SJC students? That's all of you guys to achieve your personal best. So for the final question, um, sort of piece of advice to achieve your personal best um, during high school, especially in the senior years, is to get enough sleep. 
So, you know, eight hours a night, um, at, you know, on average, um, it's definitely, you know, important um, to being able to, you know, wake up feeling refreshed, um, you know, not sort of having mind blanks or sort of brain fog during class, um, because then you'll fall behind and you'll struggle, especially when it comes up to an exam period. So sleep is definitely, um, definitely an important factor to consider. Practically speaking, in order to do your best on the HSC, I would say follow the syllabus. That's like the most important thing, particularly for content-based subjects like all the sciences uh, and SOR and things like that. Follow the syllabus. It's just a list of everything that could be on the exam, so make sure you know the syllabus inside and out and know everything on there as best you possibly can. Um, but personally, it's about finding what works for you in terms of study methods and time management and things like that. Um, so for me, study methods, I found making really detailed summary notes and actively recalling them was good. Uh, a lot of people say they did heaps of practice tests and things like that. But for me, for most subjects, practice tests really did not work. Um, so it's important to find what works for you because the widespread advice might not be the best for you personally. Um, it's also good not to compare yourself to other people because that was a lot of the time bad for me. I would compare what works for me to other people and I would feel like I would begin to doubt my own methods um, and that was never good. Um, also, do the accelerated program because it gives you the space to focus on just one subject and do the absolute best you can on that one subject. And then if you get a really good mark, then that provides you with a, a bit of a safety net for your ATAR, I guess. And it also provides you the confidence throughout year 12 that you can do well. Um, it is also incredibly important to do subjects that you enjoy. Don't just pick subjects that you think will scale well or that you think will lend themselves well to the degree that you plan on doing. Do subjects you enjoy because you'll do better at them and it will really help your final marks. I always like like to set goals. So I always knew I wanted an ATAR over 95. Like that was something in my mind pretty much all through school. So goals are really helpful to keep you motivated. Um, definitely staying organized as well. So for example, the holidays before the trial exams were really useful for me in terms of staying on top of things um and choosing subjects you genuinely enjoy like my best subject was one of the ones I was most passionate in so don't try and take on too much and do what you love to do and work hard also comparing yourself to others that's really easy to do an easy way to burn out but definitely not helpful because no one really has it figured out so I think the most important thing is your teachers um I what got me through year 12 in year 11 and 12 is that like I, I would ask my teachers whenever I was like confused on something, especially in like English and legal studies. Um, really, just like that, like they know the syllabus better than better than anyone. Like a lot of them mark the HSC, so they can really get you that kind of um, that knowledge that you can't really find in the textbooks, because they can sort of manipulate that knowledge um, that you know to to kind of fit the essay questions or fit the short answer questions that can be really difficult during the HSC. Um, I'd also recommend like really, really learning the syllabus and like through like past papers or practice papers, knowing the, like, every single type of question they can ask you, especially in the essay heavy subjects, because um, if you know if you know everything they can ask you, like that, there's nothing you can do to get a bad result on that test. Which sounds it sounds like a lot, but it's like I I didn't I'm, I wasn't very good at like content studying. I just kind of like test studied if that makes sense so I kind of swapped those two times out and that's what got me to where I needed to be just because I, I don't know it was like a really good safety net for me knowing what they could ask I could, could kind of learn what I needed to learn around that remember to stand on the shoulders of the giants who have come before you so students you know you're not the first person to do the HSC and you're also not the first person to try and do well at the HSC there are hundreds and hundreds of people who have done this before you and who have gotten those really good results. So you can actually jump online, you can even message people, you can send emails, and you can actually ask those people who have done really well, ask them what they did, and then just copy 
some of the techniques and things that they used. And then that can probably see you get better results. Because what you'll find is that when you actually look at what the sort of students that get, um, you know, like 99 plus ATARs, you'll find that they all do really similar things. So if you actually go out and find those sorts of things that they do, then you can take those on for yourself and you can start to use them and apply them in your own learning. So that was my biggest piece of advice. Um, that was something that definitely really helped me. Like I mentioned before at the beginning, I mentioned the use of mind mapping. That was something that I learned from going out and even just watching videos on YouTube of people who have got sort of like 99 ATARs and then just retelling their experiences. I noticed this common thread of them using mind maps and then I started trying it myself and it worked amazing. Absolutely, let's give a round of applause. Um, in conclusion, I think that last question, there's some real value in, in learning from our students with that last question. I really like that a couple of students said, to achieve personal best, do not judge yourself against others. Don't compare yourself against others. So I think that's really powerful. That's a good way to finish off. Um, thanks for your participation. Uh, it's an annual event, so I look forward to having uh, our current Year 12s up on stage next year and uh, hopefully sharing some of their success. Thank you.